Good evening, welcome. We've got no sound out here, so I didn't really know that we're on air other than I just saw my picture, but just to put you at ease. It is the 29th of October, it's Wednesday evening, we are live on Genesis TV. And if you're watching this in a repeat, you may see us on other channels. Uh, we just thank God that we have the opportunity of coming to you at such an interesting time in mankind's history. Uh, the world's crashing, uh, as far as the finances are concerned, it goes up and down on the stock market. Maybe that's going with your heartbeat and your heart rate, but don't worry, don't panic. Jesus said not to worry about the things of this world, because they are passing away. But he, or she, who does the will of God, remains forever. That's really re reassuring when you, you're thinking, well, hang on a sec, am I going to have a job? next week or I've already just lost my job uh, apparently 20 million across the world their workforce will be diminished by that number because of the current economic crisis uh, the world governments they don't know the answers they get together they huddle together they even explode together in a sense of trying to find an answer to the problems but as soon as they sort of sort out one it leads to another problem they fix this here and they fix it there but there's no answers uh, that they really have full control of. So, what do we do? Uh, well, we've got guests that are coming on the program from time to time, some very, very interesting. And tonight's guest is Dr. Richard Kent from Final Frontiers. Welcome to the program, Dr. Richard. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Nice to be here. Now, tonight, um, we, you are going to be talking about money and finances, funnily enough. Absolutely, so, yes. Uh, you have an incredible testimony, um, and we'd like to hear about that as well, with regards to... Uh, not near-death experiences, but no. a, uh, a different one tonight on, on you know, how God provides um, even without asking or without trying. That's right. Yeah, what well, we do. Yeah. We prove God in the area of finance. Yeah. But his name is Jehovah Jireh. Which means? God provides. It's not the Jireh, is it, that like, you get from social services if you're out of a job? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the wrong spelling. Sorry. <laughs> Jehovah Jireh. Is, yeah. uh, God provides. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we're joint heirs with Christ. And the first thing we need to know, all of us, is we're multi, multi millionaires. Now, I mean, I'm not a multi millionaire, actually, in the bank. But as far as God is concerned, we're joint heirs with Christ. And Jesus made everything. And he owns everything. And we're joint heirs with him. So, in now, the New Testament, which is his will. He's, you know, we're joint heirs with Christ. So, you That's know, a good point, but in reality there are many Christians across the world. In fact, I was looking up the numbers the other day, it's, it's incredible. There's a third of the world's population are Christians. But I wouldn't say that they all feel as if they're millionaires, and some of them uh, do live in dire straits. And I, I, I would dispute that figure, actually. A third of, a th well, let's, point, let's look at United Kingdom. It, to be a true follower of Jesus, you've got to be a born-again Christian, right? I don't think it's a third of a third of the United Kingdom are born-again Christians. Well, I was looking, I mean, if you believe the stats that you get uh, out okay. there, I was looking on the internet and it said, uh, this was in the year 2000, uh, uh, they said 32% of okay. the world's population. Cause only, got, only God knows. you got an, an incredible amount of believers, uh, believe it or not, in China alone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Big we're not supposed to say that, of course, on air, yeah, yeah, because yeah. they're under tremendous persecution. Sure. Uh, we might not have that amount, many proportionately in the United Kingdom because no. you can see from the state of our broadcasting networks uh, especially the BBC we do have presenters that you know are sort of lowered the baseline somewhat yeah. um, and uh, you know have sort of fed into our society a base mentality of yeah. uh, you know that we see through uh, yeah. the recent news mm. of Brandon uh, you know yeah. uh, Russ whatever his name is yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah so we've got uh, to come back into um, the world w in a way that we can relate to them and finances is, is one way we can. Now what, what have you got to offer our viewers tonight who perhaps are just switching channels and thinking well you know Christianity is a bit of a joke let's have a look what's on uh, <laughs> Genesis tonight. Well first of all I've got a testimony. I mean I was a GP and uh, you probably know, but because I was on, this on the program a while ago, I've interviewed over 300 people who've died and met Jesus Christ and now they've been to heaven or hell. That made a big difference. So for a whole lot of reasons, I left general practice, and that was 11 years ago. And because I retired early, because I retired when I was 50, my income went down by 80%. That's a big drop. And actually, my monthly income uh, was, was, was less than my monthly outgoings in terms of my mortgage. Well, that's so about everybody these days. <laughs> well, no, not quite. No, no, no. not quite. I mean, our, our monthly income was less than the mortgage. 
uh, we were about 260,000 in debt. So um, we prayed about it, and we, we, we've been Christians, I've been a believer since 1974, and we prayed about it, my wife and I, and uh, we said, well, we, we, we laid out the, the bank statements and said, come on God, what are you going to do about this? Do you know, he didn't say a thing. He said, but what, what he did impress upon us was to set up a charity, it's called the Final Frontier Charitable Trust, and to travel around the world, uh, basically doing evangelism, but giving away all our materials, free. So we would travel, we've actually traveled 26 countries now, and we travel around and we give away all our materials, we travel free, we stay locally, or either with a pastor or whatever. Um, we also provide money for orphanages and vehicles if necessary, all sorts of things like that. Um, but, you know, within nine months, all, all that 260000 was paid off from different sources, seven different sources. It was all paid off, and we just kept going. Uh, our income's gone up, um, and there is no problem. So we've just carried on. Now, Jesus, actually, he's, he was a giver. He was a tremendous... He didn't just... I mean, he, he died and gave his life so that we could go to heaven. But during his earthly ministry, he was a tremendous giver. Tremendous giver. I mean, he Here's had... some examples. Well, he had a treasury. And every night, Judas Iscariot would get up and give money to the poor. Every single night. And large sums. I mean, I, I, it doesn't say this in the scripture, but I believe the real reason that so many crowds follow Jesus, were, well, there were three reasons. But I think the first two, because human nature is very predictable, is that Jesus was healing the sick and giving away large sums of money. You think he was actually doing that? Well, why didn't he demonstrate that, say, at the time of the Man of the Beatitudes, when... <clears throat> he was feeding the 5,000 plus. Well, he, he did demonstrate that. He did it in a different way. He didn't he use did, finances. He, he, well, I mean, he, didn't he, go, he, he didn't send them to the local shop, well, go and buy 20,000 loaves of bread. Well, let's, let's talk about that. That's in Mark chapter 6. Let's mm -hmm. talk about that particular one. Uh, Mark chapter 6 is very interesting, that, because uh, it was the end of the day, and the disciples said to Jesus, um, Jesus, Master, he said, the people are tired, tired, send them into the villages. They can buy, go and buy food for themselves and drink as well because they're thirsty and Jesus said no um, you uh, you feed them and they said master shall we spend 200 denarii on feeding this crowd that was a financial question now remember yeah. a denarius is a, is a day's wage that's right what it was what, days they, money. Yeah. what they were saying is shall we spend eight months wages on feeding this crowd now put it in modern day terms now this is Surbiton mm -hmm. And the local, uh, the local income, let's say it's about 24,000 yeah. for an average income in Surbiton. I was going to say 25, but I mean, yeah. Well, let's say 24, because yeah. the Cause numbers it's divide. Yeah. The numbers yeah. work. You see, it's, the disciples were saying to Jesus, Master, shall we spend 16,000 pounds on feeding this crowd? For one meal. For one meal. And by the way, that, there wasn't an exclamation mark. It was just a simple financial question. Master, before we go and spend 16,000 pounds, are you happy with that? Mm. Yeah. We write it off in the books. Now, we can just talk a, bit, a little bit more about that, actually, because it's very interesting, because human nature is predictable. Now, you know what Peter was like? <laughs> he was, he was uh, what I call a, a firepoint aim guy. He was, wasn't he? A son, <laughs> a son of thunder. He was a son of thunder. So, yeah. you know, if that was all the money in the kitty, he, oh, yeah. would, have, he would have said, oh, hang on, chaps. <laughs> I just want to make sure, Jesus, we'll give it away, but the £16,000 we're about to give away, do you realise we're about to give away all the money in the kitty? Yeah. But he didn't. He was relaxed about it. Now, why was he relaxed? Because they did, Jesus did it all the time. I think it, was, I think it probably represented only about 10% of the money in the kitty. Uh, it does say, I was just trying to find the actual reference, but it does say to, to tithe every three days. We're used to tithing on an annual basis, but Jesus tithed every three days. How do you know that? It's actually in the scriptures. I was just trying to find yeah, the actual right. verse. That's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. So they were, they, it says to give offerings on the other days, but to tithe every three days. Gosh, that so, would upset a lot of people today, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, they it's were all relative they, anyway. They were, they were used to Jesus giving away huge sums of money. And so they were fairly laid back about this. They just wanted to check about it. So for that reason, I believe there was at least the equivalent of about £160,000 in that treasury. Mm. So Jesus, so, so Je there's only 10% of uh, would have fed them for that one meal. But so, so why didn't why did Jesus? Well, I'm mean, I asking the obvious question. But yeah. so why did Jesus choose to use uh, this time to provide a miracle? Well, it's, it's, I mean, I, I don't know why he chose that time. He just, I mean, money is just a vehicle. 
I mean, he could have chosen money. He could have he could have multiplied the the loaves and the fishes. He could have he could have used used all sorts of supernatural ways to feed the people. He chose to do a miracle through the disciples. Perhaps mm. he wanted to teach them about the supernatural. Can I ask you something? Yeah, go on. Yeah. Just a thought here. Yeah. Uh, using these analogies from the past yeah, and the way yeah. Jesus did things, do you think he took an offering after he preached? Never. Oh, Not that's one interesting. single. Where do you get that from? Well, it doesn't say so, does it? That's a good Not point. once. He never took. He'd never sold any a single thing. He never sold any books, tapes, or videos. He never took up an offering. He never did a miracle and said, "Here's the here's the offering plate." He never had turnstiles at the Sermon on the Mount. He did, he never did he have any databases? Did he take the names of the <laughs> I don't think so. The point is, it's, it's outstanding that he never, ever took up any money offering. So there's never a time he's asked for money in his ministry? No, and we've adopted that in our charity. We never sell anything. We never sell any books or tapes or videos or anything else. People can get our free books. Am I allowed to say where they can get it from? Yes. No, it's, our website is fun, uh, www. Especially if they're free. Yeah, <laughs> they're free. Oh, they're free. You can't buy them. Yeah. There's there's no facility mm. to buy our material. www.finalfrontier.org.uk. I said again, www.finalfrontier.org.uk. And on there, there are twelve subjects. Uh, you can read all all this information and money, all free. But also, um, you can you can watch these movies about life after death, uh, the Final Frontier Final Frontier movie, the Lazarus Phenomenon movie, and these two. Uh, two books, you can download them free. Uh, Beyond the Final Frontier what's, and The Final Frontier, there are stories of nearly 60 people who've died and met Jesus Christ and either been to heaven or hell, what they're like. Now, we don't sell them, we give them away. Hard co we go to meetings, we give them away, but uh, people all over the world can just download the e-books, internet books, and just you know use them as tracks if they like. And they've got lots of pictures. took me about a year to write them, <laughs> but they're free. They're free. The reason you can do that, Dr. Richard, is, is, yeah. is what and why and how? Well, the emphasis is on giving. You see, our emphasis on, if we do the giving, then God will do everything else. Um, Jesus said, give, and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing. So we concentrate on the giving, and God concentrates on giving back to us, pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing. We're not poor. We were poor. I mean, you know, when my income went down by 80%, we were in trouble. But the Lord paid off all the debts, and now we, we, we don't own a house. We rent a house. That's on purpose. I mean, God knew about this credit crisis. Two years ago, we sold a house, and God said, don't buy another one. Just rent one for the time being. I think renting is very prudent, because if you, you think you own a house, you don't. All you've got is a very large payment for the rest of your life, if you're blessed. <clears throat> Otherwise, you'll end up passing it on to your kids, this yeah. huge debt. Yeah. Uh, and today, it yeah. could be in neck. Ne negative equity yeah, to the right. tune of 30 percent as uh, announced yesterday yeah. another 15 percent for the house market values yeah. so a total of 30 yeah. uh, percent and we're paying um, for the privilege uh, to yeah. the bank so yeah. owning property is is something I think is times past isn't it right now right now it's a bad yeah. time so I mean, you, the world's you, going through an economic disaster I mean mm. I don't know where it's all going to go but it's really bad news because yeah. the world system doesn't work God's system does work yeah. we proved it we're, you know God's system doesn't have uh, booms and busts it just just God says given it shall be given unto you don't worry about everything else just concentrate on the giving let me ask you this what I liked about uh, the time when God, if you like, was more in charge of man's affairs and he had a people that represented him, the Jewish people, and he gave them laws and precepts and, and ways in which to, to live. And one of those provisions was an incredible one, which was the year of Jubilee, which every 50 years, mm. uh, all your debts were cancelled. Yeah, perfect. And yeah. Uh, yeah. it was. It, mm. So it meant if somebody got into trouble in mm. their, during their lifetime, mm. Um, it meant that the kids were able to inherit all their yeah. property debt free and start again. Start again. Uh, so you got your property back even if it had been mm. rented out meanwhile, etc., yeah. etc. But yeah. nevertheless, yeah. today there, there's very little chance of recovery when somebody's life is devastated either through a death, uh, mm. uh, especially mm. of, mm. Uh, of the, of the breadwinner. Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay. And or there is unseen circumstances. It could be the mm. loss of the property through mm. fire, mm. the uninsured mm. losses, mm. Yeah. Uh, other things that could just devastate that. And there's no way back. Uh, but God's ways are so much. Well, they're more wonderful. They're, you know, they're they're, I mean, you know we, 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 we were in real bad 
you know, we mm. were in trouble. We were about to repossess the house. We had Granny and Grandpa living in the house, and they were about to be homeless. And we got three kids at university, and they were going to have to leave for university. It was pretty bad news, actually. Yeah. But God is the answer to all these things. You know, <laughs> it says in Malachi three, "Prove me." God mm. said, "We're actually invited to prove God in the area of finance." Prove me if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out on you a blessing you will not have room to receive. Mm. I don't know why, but when you, not many churches talk about money. It's, yeah. it's almost a sort of no-no subject. They want people to tithe, but they don't really talk about money in, in, the, in the way that Jesus talked about money. Jesus talked a lot about money, and uh, Paul talked a great deal about money. So what are the parallels today for uh, when we see our organizations, whether they're television companies, whether they're ministries that are uh, outwardly supporting uh, people disadvantaged, like pe yeah. missionaries, yeah. Uh, or somebody who's helping feed the poor in yeah. Guatemala or wherever it is, yeah, sure. uh, the problems in the world are, uh, you know, incredible, yeah. increasing yeah. problems. Yeah. Uh, but the church is at home. So what are the parallels between, say, what, what would Jesus do? if he was here today uh, and head of one of those organizations. Well, he's supposed to be head of all of them, by the way, but <laughs> well, he doesn't often get a look in. I'll, I'll come to your question in a minute. I think there are three types of churches, because we've done a lot of traveling uh, the last 20 mm. years. We've been to 26 countries, and we've, uh, and we've worked in an enormous number of churches, enormous. And I think there are three types of churches. The first church is a very, very good church. They don't have to be large. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. And they, uh, they, they, do, they preach tithing, and they publish um, a, an annual set of accounts so everybody knows exactly where the money is all going. And then they do wonderful things with that money. They support missionaries. They preach. They, um, I'm thinking of a, a church in Barbados right now. We're, we're members, actually. It's called People's Cathedral. They send, the, they send through the airwaves, they send the, the gospel all over the Caribbean. They've got a little hospital there. They've got an old people's home. Um, They've got an orphanage. Um, they, they're, really, they're really doing what Christians should be doing. That's type one. That's a good type of church. There's another type of church, um, there are quite a lot of them in the United Kingdom, where the people just don't read the Bible at all and don't really understand. It's a religious group uh, who don't understand anything about Scripture and don't understand anything about money either. So they raise their money by, I'm not being rude here, but I am being rude, by, they raise their money by having jumble sales and things like that. Mm -hmm. God isn't really into jumble sales, I don't think. I don't think Jesus had any jumble sales. Uh, and there's a third um, uh, type of church, which is not good news, is where um, that people are encouraged to give, but there's no accounts, no annual accounts, and nobody knows where that money is going. And sadly, a lot of the money is taken by the leaders of the church. Now, I don't want to say much, too much about this type of church, but they do exist, because I've come across them. Mm, really? That, but the that, sorry? that is sad. Uh, well, they do exist, yeah. <clears throat> but have they no fear of the Lord? Evidently not. <laughs> they, because I mean, we're all accountable. We're all accountable. Yeah. But, you know, we have to be honest. So when we give our money, we're very, very careful that there are no middlemen in the way that are going to take my, our money from where it actually is destined. I mean, we just come back from working in the Philippines in death row. <laughs> there are, it's the largest church in Asia, and there are 1,100 people on death row and 12,000 people in this maximum security prison. And there are two wonderful Philippine missionaries there, and they have lots and lots of family and wives and girlfriends, or what, just family and everything, who, who visit. So we've just given them some vehicles and a motorbike and computer and stuff, and we're able to do that because other people, you know, freely give our, and help our, our, our charity, and it's all good news. So sometimes we, we help orphanages, sometimes we, um, sometimes we help missionaries, and whatever it is. Let me ask you a question. What, what, what do you think about all these Christian ministries that um, just are asking for money all the time? Because I don't see that in the scriptures. What do you think, Howard? Um, well, that's a good point. Uh, I don't see it in scripture too. I mean, I ha do have my problems with that, and I've been challenged because I, you know, we do run Christian television stations mm. um, in Revelation and Genesis, mm. and it costs a lot, a lot of money. Mm. Um, and I think the key is, for me, what I've tried to do is is avoid the telethon mentality where you promise yeah. Yeah. Uh, miracles or you promise to, mm. that if somebody gives you um, <clears throat> a certain amount of money mm. uh, that they w are either going to be healed 
uh, or they're going oh, to be yes. blessed a hundredfold. Um, mm -hmm. And in this system now, you yeah. know, that, and they sort of manipulate the scriptures, mm -hmm. I believe, to, mm -hmm. to, to gain money. Mm -hmm. um, mm. I'm dead against that. Good. <laughs> uh, Good. I, I don't, mm. but I do understand the problem. But the thing, mm. thing for us is stay small, mm. try not to conquer the world, because mm. the world's a big place, and mm. to try mm. and be global, yeah. um, as if you know, there's there's enough Christian television stations all over the world. If they all looked after their own territory, I mean, it's mm. a little bit like mm. the Apostle Paul. All right, he was a, a one that did go out into mm. a lot of the other areas, but under yeah. the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But he set up a church and then moved out and came back to Jerusalem. Yeah. You know, he was one mm. who was sent out. Yeah. And I think that there's a lot of the costs are that are incurred are mainly on satellite time, Richard. Yeah, sure. And that costs thousands and thousands yeah, yeah. every month. Yeah. Now if you're trying to win the world as it were and, mm. and, and be on every satellite under mm. the sun, literally, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it costs millions every month. So yeah. we've mm. I've made it my Mm. My aim is to stay small, mm. look after the mm. the sheep, God's sheep here in this territory, which is in the United Kingdom and uh, mm. Europe, mm -hmm. and and therefore my costs or our costs are very very low. Mm. So we don't have to beg for money, which is what I believe it is mm. begging. Yeah. But we do make our needs known at the end of each month. Yeah, and we've sure. only just started to do that. But we we say what has come in and what has gone out. Now, for example, we just had our uh, Foundation, building the foundation, which is the charity, uh, night just two nights ago. Mm. Now this month mm. we were in surplus. How oh, good! <laughs> but mm. it, you know, mm. you think, well, should I say we're in surplus? I said, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. you know, because yeah. that's that's the truth. Yeah, that's you right. can't have it both ways. But it's it seems to be a bottomless pit when yeah. Christian channels ask for money. They never say we've actually where yeah. it's gone. Yeah, there's no accountability. Yeah, uh, and we have. Uh, mm. li documented evidence of where our money goes that's perfect. and what we need. That's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. But well, I you're cannot. brilliant. That's perfect. That's absolutely you think perfect. that's right? Do you think Jesus would be happy? Absolutely. With that? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Because you're accountable. You see, that's the thing. You're accountable to all the people who have donated, yeah. and that's great. Because some of the, the 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 tricks, if I can call them that, they are tricks. Yeah. That they get up to in order to get money from people, I f it makes me feel sick. Yeah, yeah, literally, physically yeah, sick. Yeah. Um, now I don't watch it because I, I just that, I don't get upset because yeah. you are tempted to watch it. They just go on and on and they on. Do. They say they're going to go on for two weeks. It becomes four weeks. It becomes six weeks. Yeah. Um, they're just very hard nosed about it, and um, and yeah. and it gets desperate. And I don't think that does God any favors. And especially those who are just switching on to Christian television for the first yeah. time, they all they on. see is people mm. asking for money. And there are some, Richard, I mean, I got um, one today, and I won't mention names, but the office manager said, shall I just write back and say, hmm. you know, please un unsubscribe us to your, from your <laughs> list? <laughs> yes. I said, no, because then I can see what they're up to. Yeah, sure. Let them keep coming, because they, yeah. they don't miss a trick, some of them. Whatever's happening in the world, hmm. they will say, send us your money because this is happening. I mean, they don't, I, I don't believe they're using it to help those people that they mention. Mm. Some of them do, but not all of them. So it's, mm. it, it, I'd love it if it were just like you that, you know, mm. and, and what we're trying to be is more like a George Muller that, you mm. know, that yeah. God will provide. If he's, in, if he's in it, what you're doing, he will provide. Yeah. And if not, let's move on to something else. Yeah. I can't understand why people yeah. would just keep going on and on and on when there isn't the money there. Just move on to something else. God will make a way for you to enter he does, he a does. ministry of he some does. sort that is outside of begging, begging. Did Jesus ever beg for money? No, no, no. Did no. his disciples ever beg for money? No, no. You sure? His disciples were wealthy. <laughs> Even though they were just simple fishermen. Let's talk about it. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about it. What do you Can think, anyway? Are you well, I want question? to talk about Jesus first, and All then right. I'll talk about disciples. Because right. it's actually very, very important. You see, if somebody wants to go around traveling around the world and doing, doing what you do and doing what I do, it's expensive. It's very, very expensive. Very expensive. So we, to be practical, we must be sure that God is going to provide for us. So let's look at the models. Forget about what other Christians are doing. Let's look at the models from the scripture. First of all, Jesus himself. He was the wealthiest baby in Israel. 
He was given gold when he was a baby. And myrrh and frankincense, yeah. Frankincense and myrrh. Yeah. But where now, did it go? Well, uh, I'm quite sure that his, his stepfather, Joseph, looked after it. And of course they went to Egypt for a couple of years. Yep. And then they were called back and they went to Nazareth. Right. And Joseph bought a builder's company. Mm -hmm. start out. He wasn't a, Jesus wasn't a carpenter. He did make tables and chairs, but he made houses. If you go to the Golan Heights, my yeah. wife's in Israel right now, but I've been there many times. If you go to the Golan Heights, they make little villages of mm -hmm. what it was like in the times of the New Testament. Well, like the Nazareth village. Yeah, yeah. Well, you remember, have you been to that one? Yes, yes, That's yes. That's brilliant, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. There are lots of them, actually. Mm. Well, you can see that you know, Jesus made, he made the tables and the chairs, but he also made the door frames, the windows, the, the roof timbers. Um, the outside trellis railings and all the whole thing. He, Jesus was the d creator of the whole universe. On his earthly, in his earthly life, he was builder of houses, and now he builds our our lives too. Mm. So he's a builder. Mm. Anyway, at some stage, um, can I I'll get, just before you go too far off that? <laughs> uh, something that has, has puzzled me is that if Jesus, which I, I doubt, I don't doubt that the, the, the wise men that they came and they gave those gifts. Yeah. I'm not sure whether they're all spent up by the time they got got very far, or whether were, no. Hang on a sec. I know what it is. It's the it's the chronological chronological timing of that event because when uh, Joseph and Mary presented Jesus on you know because it was mm. a male boy and they had to be presented. Yeah. Um, it was Simeon, I think, wasn't it, in the synagogue that was there and he said, at last I've seen the salvation of the Lord when yeah. Jesus was presented. Yeah, uh, I think so. yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Now, she only gave uh, a turtle dove. A turtle dove. Which is for the poor. I know, that's right. She, as a, an offering rather than But that was, that the was other for end. Jesus. You see, but but I'm, what I'm saying is maybe right at that moment she, they didn't have their hands on the, the funds because the wise man came a little bit later. Well, that's the whole point, you see. That, that the thing is that on Jesus' behalf they gave a turtle dove, which was a poor man's gift. Yes, you see, to the Lord. But to the Lord. But uh, you know, this thing is established in the Old Testament as well as the New Testament. Give to the Lord and be given back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing. Mm. You see, so. On, on Jesus' behalf, Mary gave a turtle dove, and sometime within the following two years, over the hills comes these wise men, exactly. that, giving, bearing gold, frankincense, and myrrh as a direct, um, you know, response to the turtle dove. Yeah. No, no I'm glad. That's uh, seed I mean, faith. I only realized this that's tonight faith. as I'm that's, speaking to that's you. That's seed faith. Yeah. yeah. No, but I'm, what I'm saying is that yeah. there, it helps to the argument that the, the wise men were not there at the night of the birth of Jesus. That's no, what no, I'm saying. No, 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 no. No, I know, but many Christians think... No, they weren't. Oh, yes, they well, that's in, that's in the Christmas carol story. I know, yeah. yeah. But you no, see, some there were more than three, by the way. There were probably a whole crowd of them in a caravan. Yeah. And there were Jewish believers who, were, you know, had come to worship the Messiah. Mm. That's what they were. Because, you see, sorry, I diverse a little bit, but it that's is good right. because there are, to help those that might yeah. think, well, what on earth, where are we, where are we getting this information from? Because Herod said to his wise men, where, where is this king of Israel to be born? Yeah. At what time? And they looked at the prophecy and they I said, see. well, he, it's going to be in Bethlehem and, it's, and, he, and the wise men have come at this time to find him. Yeah. All right, so he is assessing the, time, the chronological yeah. event yeah. of his birth yeah. from the time of Micah's prophecy. Micah 5.2, yeah. Yeah, and also Bethlehem. Daniel, 70 weeks of years. Yeah. And so he's working it all out and he said, right, go and kill all those under the age of two. Two. Yeah. Now, what, you know, so it showed you there was a, a period, um, mm. Mm. Uh, you know, a, a, mm. a longer period than what we would think uh, mm. to allow for the wise men to come. Yeah, well, we, they came, we don't know when they came. But sometime within the, we know at the age, roughly about the age of two, that um, Jesus was taken by Joseph and Mary off to Egypt. Into Egypt, yeah, um, which would have been a great provision for them to yeah. have have that yeah. those finances to do. We don't that. know exactly when the wise men no. came. Have that f no. those finances to do. We don't that. know exactly when the wise men no. came. No. But, it's but anyway, the it point shows that it wasn't on the night, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, oh Both yes, those events, that's true. Uh, Simeon's thing, yeah. and... Uh, yeah. But the point was, yeah. Jesus was, a, a, was probably the wealthiest baby as a result of giving the turtle dove, and the fact that, you know, God was blessing, hmm. was blessing, he was, became the wealthiest baby, frankly. He doesn't yeah. say that in well, the Well, quite rightly, because he was going to be, you yeah. know, he is who he, you he know, is who he is. who he is, which is the mighty God, you know. But then, moving on, you see, we know that Jesus attended the temple when he was 12, and that he started his ministry at the age of 30. Mm -hmm. What we don't know is when Joseph died, but when he did die, 
By now, Jesus had four brothers and at least two sisters. We don't know their sisters' name. We do know the brothers' names. Yeah. James, James, Joseph, um, Judas, and one other. Yeah. Yeah, I forget the other one. I can't remember name. either. Yeah. <laughs> Some will write in and say, but he didn't have any. And I know. I know, no, I know. That, but but the, it's very clear in Scripture that it he did. It certainly did, yeah. And also, the, um, uh, I was reading this week uh, that Tacitus, yeah. uh, who wrote about Jesus, and yeah. also uh, yeah. Josephus Flavius, or Flavius Josephus, yeah. said that he, uh, he wrote about James, the brother of Jesus. Absolutely. Okay, it's yeah. in history. So yes, yeah. he did. Yeah. He have did brothers have brothers. And sisters. Well, by the t anyway, my point is that the time when Joseph, uh, his stepfather, died, Jesus was the eldest son, and he would have inherited, in, according to um, the, the custom of the times, uh, he inherited the family home and the family business and a lot of responsibilities. He had to look after Mary, who was now a widow, and his four brothers and his sisters. Stepbrothers. So he inherited a family home. So by the time he started his ministry, um, he'd been given gold, frankincense, and myrrh at the age of, as a baby, mm -hmm. and he'd already inherited a family home and a business. Joseph and son, the builders, probably the, the, best, build, the best builders merchant in, in the whole of Israel. I, I would think. imagine so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he started his ministry not as a pauper, but actually as a wealthy person, which is why he had a treasury. I mean, you know, a lot of vagrants up in London, but they, they don't have treasuries. Mm. Well, Jesus had a treasure, and you know, I don't know the time right, but I think there was a lot of money in there. So that's why Judas was tempted in the end. Well, he stole money. No, he stole money every day, every mm. night, I should say. When he was giving money away to the poor, he stole, mm. and Jesus knew. Now, if Jesus had said something about it, if Jesus had, had had challenged him once, that would have been the end of Judas, because the sons of thunder would have got their two swords out and. Him. Sorted him out, yeah. <laughs> Very Christian. <laughs> they would have done. Yeah, they would have done. <laughs> but it, what, that, but that's why um, you know it is in scripture as well that you know he was fiddling the books it's just in oh, case yeah. some yeah. Thing, a lot of sympathy or empathy I should say for Judas as a character thinking that well it was it was all on him to to betray mm. the Lord and uh, mm -hmm. it yeah. was de predestined for him to do that uh, it also he had the opportunity uh, mm. to be someone else but he wasn't he, ch he chose to have those characteristics and the thief was one of them but yeah. just just talk for a moment about the treasury you see yeah. because he Jesus chose to give to, to keep his treasury in the hands of Judas, knowing jolly well that for three and a half years, Judas was stealing every single night. Now, I'm sure you've got credit cards. I've got credit cards, and I'm very careful with them. <laughs> I'm very careful with those little pin numbers. I don't tell them to anybody. Mm. And, you know, if we have any money in there, we keep it in the safe. We don't, don't know tell anybody where that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, there wasn't any... The any was if. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. well, anyway. No. But, I mean, the point is that Jesus, Jesus actually chose to keep his money with a thief, knowing mm. that he was being stolen from every single day of mm. his ministry. Now, that's a remarkable thing, because you know, it just shows how completely laid back Jesus was about money, because he knew that God was was more able to fill that treasury up than Judas was to steal from it. Hmm. It's a remarkable thing, really, isn't it? Remarkable. So, all of this to say what? That people have wrong ideas about Jesus, that actually he, he didn't, he, Jesus didn't worry about money at all. We all worry about money, but Jesus just didn't. He was totally relaxed about it. He kept his money with a thief. He hmm. had a lot of money, but he, left, he kept it with a thief on, on purpose. Um, and when he died, uh, he died naked on a cross and had nothing. Again, he wasn't worried about money, but he was worried about, the, about his mother Mary. And that's why he said to John, behold your mother. So, you know, he was concerned with, with meeting people's needs, and he still is. He says, I, you know, I'm the Lord, I change not. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he didn't have 12 disciples, he had 72 of them. Because he sent them out. He sent, he sent in Luke, Luke chapter two, 10, he? in Luke chapter 10, he, he appointed 70 more and sent uh, either 70 or 82, we don't know. Mm. But he appointed 70 more. So at one point of his ministry, he had 82 of them. And he was looking after, he was looking at a great crowd of them. Mm -hmm. And they weren't sleeping rough in the countryside. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> I don't know about that. Because he, he said, where will the Son of Man lay his head? You know, foxes yeah. have... Holes For, and dens, yeah, and the but son, the son man, man has nowhere yeah. to lay his head. Well, he had an itinerant ministry. I mean, he was travelling all over Israel. But he could have stayed in the, you know, sort of the, the, the equivalent of the Hilton. Well, we know that, we only know the arrangements for one evening, and that was the Last Supper. He sent um, one of the disciples on, or two of the disciples on ahead to book the evening meal. And 
where they were going to sleep that night. But I, 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 I presume, therefore, that Jesus did the same other nights. They may have chosen to sleep, sleep under the stars some nights, but not in the winter in Israel. I mean, it's cold. Mm. Mm. Richard, he sent them out without a purse. Yeah, he did. And when they came back, he said, did you lack anything? He said, no, nothing. Not a thing. Didn't lack anything. And that's the point for us, you see. You know, if we really get on and start doing God's business, if the Christian church did what we're supposed to be doing, the main thing that Christian church should be doing is evangelism, get people saved, get them born again so they don't go to hell. And the second thing we're supposed to be doing with our money is in Matthew 25, um, we're supposed to be looking after the homeless, the poor, the, Orphan, the, the orphan, the widows, those without clothes, those without enough to drink, those who are starving, and those in prisons, and those in hospitals. But the, the Christian church on the whole is not doing these things. Mm. If we did them, if we were the most popular institution on the planet, because the government have only got our tax money, but the Christian church have supernatural access to the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven, you can't, you can't run out of cash in the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is not in heaven. There's no cash in there. Up in real heaven, up in the third heaven. The kingdom of, gold, of heaven though. is down... Yeah, there's plenty of gold, but there's no actual cash. Yeah. The cash, the, the rules of the kingdom of heaven, given it shall be given unto you, are for here and for now. So, we, you know, we don't worry about money. There's more money going through our charity every year, and we're determined to give more and more and more. Good for you. you know. that, that, no, that is the right thing. You should, uh, yeah. as Lorna said the other day to me, uh, we had someone who wanted, needed some money, was that just we ha handle the money mm. loosely in that sense. We don't hold it yeah, tightly. Yeah. It has to be passed on. Yeah. Um, I was just thinking of a point there, and you really got me thinking. Uh, this is an interesting mm. subject because it is something which we, you know, we don't always fully grasp. Oh yes, if Jesus, uh, if the kingdom of God was here now, I mean, you know, yeah. say the new heavens, the new earth. Yeah. No need for money. No need for money. So money will not be in the new heavens and the new earth. That is man's system. It's man's system, yeah. You see, in the Garden of Eden, no money. Hmm. They didn't have to work. Work happened after the fall. See, after the fall, this is true. God, God had put a curse on mankind. He said, mm -hmm. "You'll be cursed, and by the sweat of your brow, you'll um, you'll work, and you'll only bring forth weeds and thistles." Mm. And basically, that is the story of mankind. They're they're mm. slaving away to to make ends meet, and they only bring forth weeds mm. and thistles. Mm. But the thing is that Christ became a, a, a curse for us. You see. It says in 2 Corinthians 8, it says, Jesus became poor that we may become rich. See, Jesus did three things on the cross. He died so that we could go to heaven. He also died, it says, by his stripes we are healed. So the physical you healing, there's you a, know, my wife was blind. an eternal life. My, my, I must tell you, my wife was blind once and now she can see. Do you know, I, I had skin cancer and it's gone. Uh, you know, God just healed it. It's only happened just recently, but there you go. Uh, <laughs> you know, I believe in... in, in the you miracles know, and the it, power of God. Is I do. It, is and, something and you can't buy as well. You can't buy that. Mm. And what was I going to say? And, and so mm. we, we're going to go to heaven. And Jesus, But he didn't just come so we could all go to heaven. He came to provide um, healing for us. Like my wife was blind and now she can see. Mm. Um, I had cancer. I don't have it anymore. Um, and the other and also, and also the money thing. Yeah. I mean, I was broke. I was, I was waiting for the bank to repossess the house, and mm. God said, no, no don't worry there. about I've that. I've been in that situation. Have you? Yeah. yeah. I understand it. Yeah. But when I'm broke, I was, I was waiting for the bank to repossess the house, and mm. God said, no, no don't worry there. about that. I've been in that situation. Have you? Yeah. yeah. I understand it. Yeah. But what I'm trying to get at, so there is a hope for the future, cause, because we see what's happening in the world, you know, well, it's, right, it's not just the stock markets that's in trouble, it's not just the banks, oh, but terrible. you've got, you know, uh, it's so topsy-turvy. For example, I was watching uh, the news the other day. Um, the yen yeah. is, 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 is so valuable compared yeah. to other currencies, currencies. Yeah, no, that no, it's no. damaging to the Japanese people <laughs> <laughs> and, and because their exports are too expensive. Yeah. So it's a, yeah. it's a curse, yet, yet yeah. their performance yeah. and, and their goods are what yeah. people want, but yeah. they can't afford to buy them. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so you've got this 
fluctuating yeah. market in currency values, oh, sure. surely, I mean, in simple terms, I'm not. Uh, to me, mm. it would seem right that if the world's going to do something, they just have one world currency and we're stop, heading that way. Stop this! The speculators making money out yeah. of buying uh, the currency, thinking that the next currency is going to be this currency or that currency. Therefore, buying that up and forcing the value up, mm. because suddenly everybody's buying this, so that the, mm. every, everybody's like sheep. You know, they all go to mm. this or that wherever mm. there's movement, mm. and it mm. it creates uh, a, just a, an ever vicious circle of problems. But if you had one world uh, monetary system, there wouldn't be the fluctuation. Yeah. But yeah, th that's another topic. But no, no. Uh, let's talk about that because that's. But another. before I do that, I still want a qu an answer to my question. Go on then. Yeah, is that in the new heaven and the new earth? Yeah. If there's no money, yeah. How are people going to be? Um, assessed or how they're going to be recompensed or how they're going to uh, differentiate between those who are willing to work and those who are not because you do have lazy people and you yeah. have people who do not want to work and there's a scriptural principle that's even applies today if, you, yeah. if a man doesn't work neither should he eat that's what yeah. God says yeah, right. now it's different if he can't work because he's in incapable of work different story yeah. but in God's system new world if uh, someone, you know, it says that you will build and no one else have occupancy, you're going to yeah. plant your vineyard yeah. and no one else eat of the vine. So yeah. in other words, a man's work has to be to provide for his own household yeah. and possibly to help his neighbor. But if you've got a, a really lazy neighbor, you say, well, get off your own backside and do your own house building. Different if he's incapacitated, you, your heart goes out and you want to help. So if there's no monetary system in the new world, what... How, how will God deal with it? Or well, what you're going to have a different attitude. What, what you need to know, because remember, I've, I've actually not only I've studied uh, life after death quite a lot, yeah. and I've actually interviewed 300 people who've actually been to either heaven or hell. We won't talk about hell, but we will talk about heaven. In heaven, there's a totally different social order. We're not in different families. We're in one family. We don't even have husband and wife relationships. That's right. No marriage. That's so right. we won't have neighbours we don't get on with because we're all in no one family. No neighbours from hell. <laughs> of course. <laughs> we'll all be in hell. No, well, that's, that's right. That's a brilliant so, yeah, so, solution. So it'll yeah. be a totally different social yeah. order, you see. Now, in Luke chapter 19, we talk about, um, it talks about people have been re um, rewarded for how we've actually dealt with our money whilst on this earth. And people who've looked after sums of money quite well, will be put in charge of cities. People who haven't will not be put in charge of cities. The parable of the talents. Yeah, but mm. it's... But the no, thing that is, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it, it's a totally different social order, so it won't be a question of laziness and, uh, you know, that person not pulling his way. Because we'll all be in one family. There is just uh, unspeakable joy in heaven. It's fantastic and wonderful. And it'll just be great, because nobody's going to get tired. We just want to get on and do things and be creative. And, and we won't be getting old. No, no GPs <laughs> in heaven, thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, no big salaries. They won't want to be there, will they? Well, it won't be salaries, you see. That's, exactly. That's the whole point. There's joking. no money. Money is yeah. a man-made thing. And by the way, money itself is, 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 is neither good nor bad. I mean, with money you can feed, feed the homeless and, look, and feed the children in, in Africa, but you can also do bad things with money as well. But, hmm. So it's, it's, it's the love, the love of, money. of money that's bad, and, yeah. and that's where the world's gone wrong. And, and I must say that this world is actually... I must come back to your, to your one world... Monetary system, monetary yeah, system, do. because we're heading yeah. there. We're I heading think there. we are too. I'm, I'm just sure of it. Could see it. It's, it's well, it's back in 1933, Hitler became um, Chancellor, Chancellor of Germany, mm -hmm. and you know he came at a type a time of hyperinflation, yeah. and he is a type of antichrist. He tried to kill <laughs> off the Jewish people. Not talking about Mugabe, are you? No, no, sorry, no. We're, no. Talking, we're talking about Hitler. Yeah, and he tried to kill off. He didn't do it, but he nearly, he, he nearly succeeded in killing. Well, I've been to Auschwitz, I've been to Yad Vashem, maybe mm. you have as well. Yep. And, you know, he tried to kill off the Jewish people. Well, we're, we're, we're heading up. You're right, the world is in a mess. There is all this currency trouble. Now, I'm very worried about the British pound. It's gone up a bit today, but it's actually crashing. It's gone down, I don't know, about 10, 15 percent over the last few months. Um, it's worrying. It's very worrying because basically the value, you know, the, va the value of the pound has gone down. So our imports become more expensive. We're importing mm. inflation. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Now, these books, these books, which I won't go into now, but they're all, of, I, I study finances in great detail because I'm very, very interested in world financial affairs. <laughs> um, but the world is heading for, a, well, is already in a complete disaster. We've heard all about the, 
you know, the, um, the subprime mortgages, but just around the corner is the credit default swaps, yeah. which is the insurance for all I, these no, things. I've been following this, yeah. Richard. And I, I people, am fascinated pe people, by it. People don't know how much money is involved. It's We're talking one, trillions, aren't we? 1.2 quadrillion US dollars, yeah. which is more money than the whole of the planet. Banking system. Now this, when, when I, I didn't know it existed until last week. Oh, right. Okay? That this in form of insurance, was, which was a sort of bet <laughs> on, by the, these so-called insurance companies that who yeah. was going to go bust first, almost, right. isn't it? Well, it's, 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 it's within the derivatives. Yeah. But the thing is, it's been unregulated, you uh, see. Uh, uh, and yeah. they didn't count on uh, such a global yeah. debt problem no, no. Or, or, or a bankruptcy problem. No. And now, when they are going to have to pay, I thought D-Day was last week, but it seemed to slip by last Thursday mm. When these um, mm. insurance uh, uh, companies credit, credit, credit default swaps, yeah, we're that's about, it. Yeah. Well, 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 no, it, hasn't really, it hasn't really come to, to everyone's life. attention yeah. yet, but it will do. And, and that's going to cause mayhem. This is going to be much, much worse. The next thing down the line isn't the subprime mortgages, it's the credit default swaps, mm. because that is a far, far bigger arena. It's it's ten times the size. Mm of the mortgage problem. Um, and basically, it, you know, we've got... Um, Will it bankrupt countries? Well, it already is. It's Iceland's appeal to the International Monetary Fund. Argentina has. Um, uh, Poland, no, not Poland, sorry, po po Hungary. Po Hungary yeah, has, Hungary, yeah. and Ukraine has. And the Philippines looks like it might do. Yeah, there are a lot of countries that are in trouble. And, you know, who knows where it's all going to go, because well, the whole thing is a complete mess. My point is yeah. that we're heading for a complete disaster. We may well end up with hyperinflation because the debts are so great. I, my personal belief mm -hmm. is the debts are so great that the governments cannot meet these debts by either taxation or reducing public expenditure, which mm -hmm. only leaves one more avenue, and that's to print it, yeah. which means hyperinflation. And could it be that the Antichrist, who I believe will come very soon, we'll never see him because we'll be gone in the rapture, Antichrist will not be revealed until he who is restraining is taken out of the way. That's so right. we will not know who Antichrist is. But whoever he is, he, I believe just like Hitler came to power on the crest of hyperinflation yeah. in Germany, the Weimar Republic, when they were carting money around in wheelbarrows. Wheelbarrows to buy a loaf of bread. That's right. That's right. I People might not even know that. But that's exactly well, how that's bad exactly it was. That's exactly what happened. I'm listening, I hope you're listening in the control room. <laughs> you know, can you imagine taking a big wheelbarrow or a truck yeah. or a van full yeah. of... Uh, money that yeah. just to buy one loaf of bread. That's, That's right. how bad it got in the 1930s. It got so bad that the workers were let off, uh, off work every three hours to go and buy their provisions because the money was devaluing in that so three-hour period. Yeah. So that's how bad it got. Well, Hitler came to power at that time, and he, everyone welcomed him. He looked like the, the Messiah for them. He was a Messiah mm. of Germany at the mm. time. Well, I believe that Antichrist will come at a time of world economic crisis, such as we haven't mm. seen yet, but you know, we can see the beginnings of it all. Luke 21 comes to mind. You know, when men, men mm. will become faint out of fear upon Men's the things that are happening in sure, the earth. Sure. And we could see that on the people's faces in the, in the stock exchanges and the, and the financing, financial yeah. world. I've heard the term used, financial Armageddon, on several channels Look, let in me the last this book. Here we are. week or so. Oh, oh, financial Armageddon. Well, it's your is, fault. <laughs> this is a secular book, but it's absolutely brilliant. And it says, it's by Michael Panzer. Um, it's not, um, not the it's not a, division. It's not, <laughs> it's not a Christian book, but it's brilliant because I think of all the books I've read, this one probably gets Four impending catastrophes. Yeah, it talks about deflation, which we're currently seeing, followed by hyperinflation. Yeah. Now, what's the answer to all this? Well, it's not to get men's hearts pay them to fear, but to very quickly now get into this financial thing, that the whole financial thing that God has for all believers, but very few get into it. Which please, re please read my website. It's all. Yeah. It's there's twenty thousand words on money on web my website. Finalfrontier.org.uk. There's twenty thousand words on my website, and um, just read all about money because twenty thousand words. That's a lot. That's for a, a lot because person well, the thing is, it's you know we do dollar traveling. It's yeah. very expensive, and we need to know that you know we don't. We never make appeals for money. We never sell anything, and we we need to get this thing sorted out. Mm. So, my goodness. <coughs> uh, and let me ask you this, where does the IMF get 
its money from? Because if it, every country in the world appeals to the IMF, International Monetary Fund... Yeah, well, they're about to run out of money, you see. Well, that's what I It's in the news today. They, they was might, it? Yes, it was on the news today, that well, they might even be thinking see? of printing money, actually. The first time I've ever seen that the IMF might be printing money. See, <laughs> since they've done, done away with the gold standard, which was, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 years ago or something, 60, I don't know when, when it 1931. was. 1931. Was it 1931? Mm. My goodness. Yeah. I thought it was my lifetime. Yeah. Um, there is no <laughs> reference point for them to be able to print money to, the value of. No. Because they used to have to have that amount of gold vaults, the Bank of England, for example, before mm. they could print yeah. that amount of money. It's called fiat money, you see. So, I mean, what's to, what, I mean, take, for example, the United States um, and yeah. the UK, those two countries, how do they gauge how much money they can print? And, and I mean, how often do well, they print not, money? No, we, uh, when do they print strict, money? No, the thing is, they don't. They don't. Uh, there are countries that have printed money. Zimbabwe comes to mind. Argentina right. comes mm -hmm. to mind. And a few other countries. Mostly people don't print money. Uh, at the moment, what, if the government of any country, whether the UK or the US, are short of money, what they do is they sell government bonds. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, they sell government bonds, which are basically IOU the government, and they pay a set rate of interest, or they can even have index link bonds. But the thing is that, you know, they're not actually selling at the moment because nobody wants to buy them, because nobody knows what the future is. And the whole thing is absolutely it's lock solid at the moment. So where is the money? Because the money's there. Because if there's that amount of money that's been going around for years and years and years, where is it? Well, the trouble is there's more promises, particularly in the area of credit default swaps, the derivatives about insurance, there's, much, there's ten times as much promises for money than there is actual physical cash. And that is the problem. So that is, is the problem. Okay, <laughs> give me, put it in layman's terms. Um, if, for example, <laughs> let me just yeah. think, if that was a measure of world's money, the yeah. world's money, yeah. um, but really uh, we're spent, oh no, if that was the world's money, that amount, yeah. but we've really got this amount that we, we're, we've you want to have something much smaller than that. So Signed there's, our there's a life away there's for. The big, the big A4 sheet is yeah. the amount of promises, credit default right. swaps and mortgage promises and pension liabilities and all the rest of it promised. And something about the size of a matchbox is the amount of actual cash array, uh, around on the planet. Right. And now, has there anybody... Is the, there, I is mean, the there is the problem. Okay. There is the problem. That, that I can relate to because... Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, but where is that matchbox amount of money? Who's got it? Well, there are various, there are various gauges of um, where the money is. It's called M1, M2, M3, and M4. But the actual cash in circulation the, is M1. No, no, Sorry, no the no. actual cash in circulation I've is M1. I've got to laugh, otherwise you cry. You know? No, no, but it is. We don't need to go down the route because it all gets complex. But okay, what, but what, what we need to do is to get to God's answer to all this because there isn't an answer I know, to that because it's not a workable system. You know, in Romans but that's 12... What I'm trying to, that's what I'm trying to show here, yeah. is that it, mankind's system is not working. It doesn't work. Okay? It doesn't um, work. So that there is going to come a day... Very soon. That, uh, financial uh, Armageddon. Reckoning, yeah. Uh, absolutely. The day of reckoning. Yeah. Because, it, because the bad debts are overtaking the available yeah. cash. Yeah. That's okay. exactly right. Yeah. That's exactly... I must talk about this book, actually. This is uh, David <laughs> Wilk... <laughs> You've got a bookstore over there. Well, uh, this, you, this is like one, to buy this one a of your really, waters, really interesting actually. subject. You don't uh, sell anything, do you? Nothing. Can I have one of those waters, then? <laughs> You want one? Yes. <laughs> sorry, <'cause laughs> yeah, sure. Help us out. I Oops, can't sorry. quite reach. Okay. Yep. Um, uh, Let me just yeah. hold this up because this is really yeah. interesting. Yeah. David Wilkerson of Times Square fame, the cross and the switch blade, Mike, uh, David Wilkerson, mm -hmm. in 1973, before he wrote the cross and the switch blade, I think, I'm not sure, but anyway, around that time, he had a vision. And in the vision, he wrote down the, his book, The Vision. You can get it on Amazon.com. Mm hmm. Um, he recorded his vision, and I, you know, I don't think many, there are many real prophets around, but I believe he is one of them. Not many. Anyway, he, f he saw all sorts of things. He saw the Berlin Wall coming down. He saw the rise of pornography. He, sa he saw that uh, many Christian churches were not really Christian. They were more political than spiritual. Um, um, he saw that the, the weather would go mad, which it has done, with all the global warming and stuff. But of particular interest, he saw that they, a time when there would be a worldwide slump, mm -hmm. an economic crash, um, just before the Lord came back. And he Hallelujah. said, it, yeah. And Hallelujah, because yeah. if we're there, I, I, would, I, I would be, I'm so Well, I'm pleased. sure we are. I'm sure I we are. I'm so absolutely happy. sure we are. 
Well, he saw a worldwide uh, recession of such magnitude that it would affect the whole planet. You see, everyone refers to 1929, the Great Crash. It was a crash in Europe and America. It wasn't a crash worldwide. Mm -hmm. What we've got now is a worldwide crash. It's affecting China, yep. Japan, because Australia, the Asia, India, yeah. Africa, everywhere. Everywhere is <coughs> affected. Mm. This is a worldwide phenomenon. Never, this is a, this is a one-off it's First, never happened before, never happened before in history. In fact, I I've, I've keep hearing that from some of the uh, top world financiers yeah. on Bloomberg, for example, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, watching. Sure. They're saying that the, this has never happened before never in history. Never happened before. And, the, and there isn't any simple fix for this. I mean, mm. they keep saying, oh, yes, we've thrown... We, we've done the bailout. They haven't done a bailout at all. Mm. They haven't done, 700 billion bailout in the US is about 10% of the cash they need. I mean, you know, nobody knows what the real liabilities are because nobody knows, you know. Let me ask you, uh, well, yeah. I don't want to yeah. belittle what David Wilkinson said, so I want to come back to what he exactly yeah. said on that. He saw a worldwide crash. But and what, I, what he saw in 73 is what I believe we're seeing now. I believe the Lord is coming back. Jesus, Jesus said in Matthew 24, Luke 21, Mark 13, this is what he said. Bef Jesus said, what are the, uh, sorry, the signs. Said, what yeah. are the signs you're coming? And he said, well, men's hearts will fail in fear. Earthquakes, famines, plagues, pestilences, all these things. Mm. And that Jesus gave one particular parable. He said in Matthew 24, he said, I give you the sign or the parable of the fig tree. Mm -hmm. When you said fig tree, it's leaves going green. You'll know that my coming is near, even at the very door. This generation shall not pass before all these things be fulfilled. Now we know he wasn't talking about a fig tree, not a physical tree. He was talking about the nation of Israel. We know mm -hmm. that from Hosea and Amos. It refers to the fig tree as the nation of Israel. Now, AD 70, Titus destroyed Jerusalem, and that was the end of Israel, up until 1948. The Ben-Gurion government was set up May the 14th, 1948, and that was the beginning of the fig tree. And Jesus said, within one generation, the mm -hmm. people who were alive in 1948 will see everything, mm -hmm. absolutely everything. My including wife, his return. Including his return. Yeah. My wife was born in 1948. She's in Israel mm -hmm. right now. My wife was born in 1948. She's 60 years old, and she will see everything, including the rapture and the second coming, the whole works. Mm -hmm. You see? Now, I don't know exactly how long that is, but I do know this. In Psalm 90, verse 10, it says, The days of man are 70 years or 80 years if you are strong. Mm -hmm. And I believe, I believe it's very simple. I don't think we have to make it complicated. 60 or 80 years after 48, which 70 is... 70 years. Yeah. 70 years is the common thing. 70 yeah. years, you know, 7 is the supernatural number of God. Which takes us we, to 2018. Takes 2018. Of course, we won't be around for we won't be around for the tribulation period. Which is seven no, years. Or? Seven years. Mm. Now people say, "Oh, hang on a minute! You can't do that." Of the day and the hour, no earth, no man, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But if you read that carefully, and most people listening will disagree with me, uh, I don't think that refers to the rapture. I think that refers to that's in Matthew 24:36. If that, I think it simply refers to the new heaven, the new earth. Mm -hmm. But anyway, that's controversial. But this I, this I do know. This I do know is that the only rapture we know about is um, Enoch and Elijah. Now, when Elijah was raptured, he knew jolly well the very day he would be raptured. Elisha knew when Elijah was going to be raptured, and all the prophets knew. They all knew. Mm -hmm. And in the New Testament, perhaps we might not go down this route too much, but it does say 1 Thessalonians 4 is the famous scripture, <laughs> the, uh, Jesus will come with a shout of command, you know, and all that stuff, and we'll go to be with him. But it says in 1 Thessalonians 5, concerning the times and the seasons, it says, you, the, the, the day of the Lord will not come like a thief in the night to the sons of light. In other words, to people who are believers, this will not come as a surprise. We'll know, roughly, when it'll be. Well, and also like programs like this, yeah. who are who are explaining the yeah. well, and also like programs like this, yeah. who are who are explaining the yeah. signs of the times. Yeah. yeah. Why? Why? Why yeah. is it? Yeah. I, I always ask this question, but why is it that the the church at large yeah. doesn't deal with this uh, in its teachings from the pulpit? I have absolutely no idea. Um, on my website. Um, there's, I'm, I'm very fortunate. I go to a, a church where there's a wonderful Bible teacher, and his name is Roger French, and his specialty is end times and the rapture and the second coming and the tribulation. I have to get him on the program, Richard. I want you to Please. have him on the program. Yeah, he's, he's absolutely brilliant. Well, his anyway, name is 
Roger French. Roger French. Yeah, I've spoken to your wife mm. about him. He's right. absolutely brilliant on end times, and he's got a whole lot of research can, yeah? on the rapture and end times. Anyway, if you go onto my website, uh, there's a lot of my stuff, of, which is free, but there's a lot of Roger French's stuff, which is free too, particularly on the book of... Um, the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, the rapture, the end times, and this is absolutely wonderful stuff. And please, viewers, please <laughs> get on my website, finalfrontier.org.uk. Forget about my stuff. Go to Roger French, free teaching, MP3. Go there and get on to Revelation, uh, the, the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, all about the rapture and the end times. It's absolutely brilliant because this is the biggest event that's going to happen in my lifetime and your lifetime. Jesus yeah. is coming oh, back the whole in, of the history. in the whole of history. Yeah. And that's why I'm not worried to buy a house. We've got five-year-old cars, so what? Eight-year-old cars now? Yeah. I couldn't care less. It's not important. We're leaving them behind. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll all be leaving them soon. If the, yeah. if the um, mm. OPEC, is it, they stop production or they've cut down production a million and a half barrels a day, I'm sure that doesn't make a big deal to you, but it does to the world economy. Of course uh, it does. It's going to help yeah. to slow yeah, it down. Yeah, oil's gone down from 149. It's now 63, I think, last time I looked. Yeah. Yeah, last time all, all in the last few months. All in the last, yeah. yes, the last three months has gone down, yeah. Okay, so we're at the end of the hour. Uh, Gosh, so for the next half an hour, Richard, yeah. we, uh, we mm. could take uh, emails. So it'll be alive at talkgod.com. Um, see that come up. That is where you can partake uh, of the discussions or the subject or the topic tonight, uh, which is finances. Um, are you in the world system or are you wanting to be more in the kingdom of God um, and what are the answers and what are your fears what are your uh, yeah what are your answers what are your points uh, with regards to how we get through the the coming years uh, if this is not going to be a quick fix uh, time now uh, it's become obvious that recession could go to a slump it's a never or whatever. Fix. It's, it's a never, it's a never You face. don't think they're going to come out of this one? No. Okay. Not till the Lord comes back. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so what are your thoughts? Uh, emails have already come in unofficially. Let me just uh, uh, read you some. This is, let me go to the A button. Make a bit of a burger. Hi. I'm so blessed to see you on there with Dr. Richard Kent again. He's such a great example of how we all should be. Um, I like the stuff he says about the, uh, the way that we should be. I'd like to congratulate him for such an in-depth research in the afterlife. Uh, like himself, I have discovered so many experiences, etc. Um, okay, uh, there's a question here at the end. How can we help believers believe that God gives these experiences because I believe that they're important experiences that bring millions to the gospel message. So how do, can I? Be, how can we help believers believe that God gives these experiences? Hmm. Well, this is a nice guy. What's his name? Chris. <laughs> Sorry, this is Chris. Chris. Chris from Wales. Chris. Chris from Wales. Well, bless you, Chris. Thanks for your nice comments. Um, these are important, you know. Um, you know, Paul had a near-death experience. He was stoned to death in Acts 14. And when he was stoned to death by cross Jews, I don't think they left him half alive. That word in Greek means he was dead. And in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 2, he went to the third heaven. Mm. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 2, he went to the third heaven. And he, says, and he said there was such amazing things he saw. So near-death experiences are in the scriptures. Well, I've actually had the, the, the pleasure of interviewing over 300 people during my medical career who've actually died of heart attack strokes, um, suicide attempts, all sorts of things. And I published, uh, made two movies and published these, actually three books. This is the third book here, Return from Eternity, which you can get on Amazon. Amazon.co.uk, it's the last book. But the first two, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Uh, by the way, I don't make any money out of that. That's another, I just give, I give, I give all my stuff away. Um, there are, they're published in eight different countries. And I do, anybody wants to publish my books, they can have the manuscripts and publish them. Keep right. the money, that's all I want them to do. That's the way to get things Brilliant. going. That's, that's the way to get things you. going. That's anyway, how I started how with making programs for the Lord. <laughs> I, said I just made them and give them to networks, and I ended yeah. up with a network. Yeah. See? Yeah. See, that, that's given, it shall be given unto yeah. you. You gave away material, and God gave you... Remember uh, the programs uh, that we made? Yeah, yeah. Revelation yeah. TV. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In, I was on your days. very first one, yeah. actually. That's well, right. But the first, I think it I was, was. the third one. Yeah. Yes, you were. Yeah. And Chris Hill. Yeah, Chris Hill. Yeah. Colin Aircourt and... Barry Smith. And we talked about near-death experiences, creation, and abortions. Yeah. I want to come back and talk about yeah. abortions sometime. Yeah, you must, because that's mm. a serious issue. Uh, n n question here. 
This is from uh, Joan and Stan from Dumfries. It says, good evening gentlemen, I have a question for you. If Jesus had four brothers and two sisters, why did he ask John, at the time of his death, uh, approaching death, why did he ask John to look after Mary at the end of his life? Simple answer to that. John was the only one there. All the other eleven disciples scarpered. There was only John there. No, but I think what the point is that what he's saying here well, John, is that why did he not say, well, you look after your uh, mother, behold your son, and he, why didn't he say, and, you know, John, I've got some brothers as well for you to look after. I'm sure they were I think, I think big what, and ugly enough to look after themselves at that. Well, stage, well, <laughs> well, remember John was the one that Jesus loved. Yeah. John was the one that Jesus loved. He, he doesn't, he, he talks about the one that Jesus loved. In other words, he didn't John. have little brothers and sisters, that's what I'm saying, because do you remember that the question that was put to him when he was ministering, he was quite busy, yeah. I get, this is the impression I get in the scripture, Jesus yeah. was very busy, and the disciples said, look, your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside. He said, my mother, my brothers and sisters, my mother are those um, who are my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Exactly. Okay? See, we're, we're all, I mean, you know, we're actually busy brothers. With them. That's uh, right. We're brothers yeah. in the Lord, you see. And um, when, I, when I meet brothers in church, you know, they're actually ancestors. We're brothers in the Lord. Hmm. So the answer yeah. to the question uh, here is... Well, this, this, was the, this was the one disciple that Jesus loved above all the others, and he trusted John more than the others. Uh, he, he was the only one present at the crucifixion, which... Because um, his mother would have been probably, what, 40, 56? Well, Jesus was in his early 30s, so she was probably a teenager. She was probably about 45, my yeah. guess. Mm. But, as but it's still the principle guess, was to look after... Was to look after... But, in, she, yeah. we, but, but, but John wasn't just saying to Mary, look after Mary. Uh, saying to John to look after Mary, but to, to look after the brothers and the sisters and the family business and the whole works, I think. Yeah. That was an interesting question from Susan. Good old Susan. Thank you, Susan. Um, <laughs> she's not old. How are you, Susan? Good young Susan. I'll keep Sorry. Uh, mm. down here. Cause, okay. Um... No work in the Garden of Eden, question mark. Who no. tended it then? I think that Adam and Eve had things to do that were not a burden to them before the fall, and life would have been a bit boring otherwise. Uh, <laughs> work became hard, unpleasant, and burdensome after the fall, I presume, as they had no, no, they had to fight the earth to get what they needed. Get to fight the earth. For example, before they would have been able to collect the fruit, but afterwards they had to work to make the crops grow. Yeah, I mean, the Garden of Eden was pretty much, um, you know, sort of self-sufficient in that sense, because it, it the ecological it balance, the yeah. balance was <clears throat> right, that, you know, the, the dew came in the evening, yeah. um, and that was the water, and it tended, there was no weeds. No weeds. See? Weeds, weeds, weeds came. Everything was perfect. Part, everything was perfect. It didn't need any tending, yeah. I don't think. Maybe a little bit of very gentle tending, but not very, not very much. Not very much. <laughs> okay, um, going through some of the other emails here. Good questions. Yeah, good. For Keep them coming in, guys and girls and boys. Um, how do you know Judas stole from Jesus' treasury so often? Uh, what is the scripture that tells us that Jesus tied three times per week? Was it thirty percent per week? Do you know, I, I, I promise you it does say that. I'll put it on my website. Tell you what. I'm going to forward, if you, you got, get in contact, um, this is from Dave, Dave, if you get in contact with uh, Dr. Kent. Yeah, I'll Richard send you a Kent, reply, I'll send you a reply. Send a reply, just send me an email from my website, yeah. I promise I'll send you the scripture back, but it yeah. does say tithe every three days. I, we've got a sort of thing about it, about tithing every year, but, or proportionally every year, yeah. but that's, that's just a man-made thing, isn't it? This is somebody who's just sent <laughs> just a test, well let me just write back and say it works. It works, sorry. It's just mm. somebody just testing. Since the world's in such a mess, we, we need to get into God's pl amazing financial plan for believers because very few Christians do. Yeah. Very few Christians do. They're all, you know, most Christians sort of uh, haven't really got into it. But we need to get into it now because the world, is, the world system is collapsing. Yeah. Very few Christians do. They're all, you know, most Christians sort of uh, haven't really got into it. But we need to get into it now because the world, is, the world system is collapsing. It's just collapsing. You won't like this one, Richard. This okay. is from Barry. It says, quick email to say that your guest tonight, Dr. Richard Kent, is fabulous. Oh, sorry, right. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I could listen to him all night. Uh, he's very clever, very enthusiastic, very comforting too, especially talking about the end times and financial collapse, uh, which may, may make people very scared. Uh, to live the way Richard does is truly wonderful. Offering everything for free is so refreshing to hear from a Christian. I like the way you do things, Howard, as well. Oh, thanks. But the vast majority of Christian channels just want, 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 and are a disgrace, and they 
use Jesus for personal gain. Disgraceful, she says. No, mm. he says. Mm. I, I'm, a multitask I'm multitasking at the moment, listening to your show and reading Richard's website. Wonderful content. I'm not going to sleep tonight. God bless you. <laughs> Thanks, Barry. That's Thank you, my too. friend. That's good. I'm glad. That's I'm glad. great because, you know, all the work that goes into creating a website and putting that information on, mm. it, it, mm. it, it, it's really, you work into the wee hours and you get up yeah, early well. and work. <laughs> but it, isn't it exciting? You know, yeah. I, I was up the other morning at five yeah. o'clock in the morning because I couldn't sleep. I was so excited about the script that I'm writing about who is Jesus wow. of Nazareth. Yes. I've wanted to do it since my late 20s, yeah. and I'm putting it together as like mm. a documentary. Mm. And it's so exciting. There's so much evidence. If the world knew just how much evidence that there is, that he is a historical person, oh, and that he's not just was a good man, that he's not mm. fictitious uh, as mm. a fable, uh, you know, you're crazy, you guys out there who just didn't think that he existed at all, and that this is all made up. There is too many. The chances of him... Uh, never existing, um, uh, it, you know, it's unfathomable, you know, the chances that all those prophecies that talk oh, uh, mentioned about him over the last, over the 1500 year, years prior to his coming, you, you couldn't, uh, it would have been just incalculable, the odds uh, yeah. uh, for him not, uh, someone like him to have tried to manipulate those prophecies to fulfill them. I mean, impossible. It's Absolutely impossible, isn't impossible. it? I, I, I agree with you. You know, uh, anyway. you know Chuck Missler? Have you heard of Chuck Missler? Yeah, yeah, he's done a lot of work the, on this. He's actually. on Genesis as well. Was yeah. he? Yeah. Bless him. Well, yeah. he's a wonderful guy. I know him quite well. He doesn't he's come a, on the live programs that often, but he's, no, well, he's in, America, yeah. in America. But he's done a lot of work on this, same as you. It's impossible that Jesus is not the Messiah. He is the Messiah. And he's a figure in history. Right, another, another email here. Let me see if I can get it to be larger print because uh, my eyesight's getting worse. Um, mm -hmm. Sent from my iPhone. This is from Edward. Hi guys, ever mention of rapture, there's a resurrection first, uh, and before that there's a trumpet blast, the last trump of, rev of revelation, uh, of rev, I don't know what that means. It seems to me uh, Paul taught the day of the Lord from Old Testament, so for me in scripture the rapture is post-tribulation, Eddie from Cork in Ireland. Eddie, well, bless you, Eddie. Yeah. Um, but you know, there are there are various views on the raptures: the pre-tribulation, the mid-tribulation, the pre-wrath rapture, and the post-tribulation rapture, and no rapture at all. There are some wonderful Christians who don't believe there's going to be rapture at all. Well, bless you. Um, I actually don't agree with you, but we'll find out on the way out, won't we? That's it. <laughs> we'll yeah. find out uh, on the way out. In a way, it's a little yeah. bit irrelevant, you know, yeah. it's like, because yeah. the thing is, God's got a plan, and even mm. if we don't know the timing yeah. of that, or the chronological order, yeah. uh, it nevertheless is going to happen, so it doesn't really matter. I mean, I'd like to be prepared, just in case um, I'm, I'm, I'm in a false sense of security, that I'm not going to go through any time of trouble. So yeah. I'm, I'm of a mind that if it goes mid or post, that's fine. I, I'm ready for it. Okay. Whereas I might get caught short if I think I'm going first and I'm, I'm out of here and we could do. Shall, shall I just tell that's my That's my take. What, what happened in, in my case is <clears throat> we had three little kids and one of them who was age six at the time came to me and said, Daddy, if, we're gonna, if we love Jesus, does that mean we've got to be beheaded? Because you know believers will be <laughs> beheaded during the tribulation. Yeah, so right. I did a Revelation. very, very serious Bible mm -hmm. study about the end times. Mm -hmm. Very serious, and I'm convinced myself it's a pre-tribulation, pre-tribulation. There's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. And the Old Testament model is that believers get taken out of the time of wrath. But it says some of you will be thrown into prison, some of you will lose your life on account of me, Jesus said, didn't he? He did say that, and that certainly happened. I know in times past, happened, but, I mean, but it, doesn't it mention in um, Revelation, which is all about the end times specifically, it's not any other period because John was taken you know in, in to see what was going to happen in the future and it does talk about it there well the Christian church is not mentioned after Revelation 4 when it says come up here which is a which is the rapture I saw an open at the beginning of Revelation 4 it said Revelation 1 2 and 3 of the yeah. seven letters of the seven churches, the churches and then yeah. it, and then it says I saw an open door and and a, a voice said come up here and the, and the church is not mentioned <coughs> till Revelation 19 actually when the church all comes back to planet earth again. But it says, and I'm trying to find it, in Revelation it says also that there um, was a great crowd of people's witnesses standing before the Lord and there was some obviously crying out at that time that, you know, how much longer Lord before you avenge 
uh, your the saints. S- the souls of those beheaded. Yeah. Are you talking about that? Yeah, well, that is, of course, uh, during the trip. You're talking the about like Stephen and. James and well, the people who become believers during the tribulation. I mean, the tribulation is going to be a time of ah, tremendous evangelism. Those who become believers, in of that course, time. of okay. course, there's going to be lots of people become. I mean, there's going to be 144,000 evangelists. Mm-hmm. 144,000. Uh, 12, 12 from yeah, each, that's right. Yeah. From each tribe. And of course, there'll yeah. be the two, pr- the, the, the two, um, the two witnesses. Yeah. In uh, Revelation 11, and yeah. they're going to do miraculous things, and of course it's going to be a wonderful time for evangelism, an amazing time. But the trouble is, during that time, because of the Antichrist edict, that um, if you don't accept the mark of the beast and bow down and worship his image, you're going to be beheaded, that's what's going to happen to a lot of them. And that's why it's a jolly good idea to get people saved now, before the tribulation starts, which is mm. coming our way soon. <laughs> fascinating scriptures here I'm just reading in Revelation. Might get yeah. a chance to get into it. Let me just see if there's a, a, another email here. Mm. Um, this is from Danny uh, from Somerset. Hi Howard, like many I struggle with the pre-trib rapture and consider mid-trib to be more acceptable. Can Richard persuade me towards a pre-trib Yes, Richard can. <laughs> <laughs> Richard definitely can. Well, Danny, let us know. You've heard some of the uh, arguments so far. That was, uh, you sent that email a few minutes ago, so you might have heard the answer already. Let me know. No, just let, let's just give him a few more pointers, actually. I mean, see, the thing is, the mid-tribulation rapture, I mean, I understand that. People think about the last trumpet. It's in Revelation 10. <clears throat> However, the thing is that there's the doctrine of imminence, and we don't know. We don't know exactly when the rapture's going to be. Now, if it's going to be the mid tribulation, the tribulation seven years, it's very easy to work out exactly when it's going to be. It'll be three and a half years after Antichrist signs a seven year peace, a, a seven year peace deal with all the Arab nations around Israel. And you, so there's, you forget about the doctrine of imminence. But going back to the Old Testament models, um, uh, God saved, um, say for example, Noah and his family from the whole flood on the whole earth. He saved them from it, not in the middle of it, he saved them from it. Um, um, for example, um, oh, sorry, the children of Israel were, were in Goshen, and of course they didn't have the plagues. After the first two or three, wasn't it? There they didn't, they, they didn't was, have the plagues. So the, the whole, the, 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 there are mm. a whole lot of examples. Um, in, in Jericho, uh, there was uh, Rahab, the prostitute, and you know she was saved from Jericho. You see, right. the, the believers but are saved out of the tribulation before God said. In fact, in in Genesis 19, um, and I'm just trying to get my head all around this. Um, there's a little town called Zoar, mm-hmm. and um, the believers have to get out of Sodom and Gomorrah to Zoar, this little town. And in God says, I cannot send judgment on on Sodom and Gomorrah until Lot out. is out of Sodom and Gomorrah in, in this little town called Zoar. Mm. So that's a picture, you see. God cannot send judgment. Mm. God cannot send judgment on the, on the world until the believers are out. An Antichrist cannot be revealed until he who is restraining, that's the church, mm. is taken out of the way. Okay, what about this? It says, uh, in, Jesus said uh, at that time of the discourse on Mount of Olives, where this, so I was asking about when he was coming back, yeah. he said there would be this time of great tribulation, such as never occurred since the world exactly. came. Yeah. Unless those days were cut short, no flesh would be saved at all. Yeah. But on account of the chosen ones, those days would be cut short. So, in other words, you've got to be in the time of great trouble in order to be taken out. So, well, we're, so we're, you rented into the time of trouble. You see what I mean? Well, no, I don't know. Well, I, I think what do, I mean, I see, we're, 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 well, no, I do see what you mean. But the thing is, we are living in a time of potential trouble right now because since 1945, we live in the nuclear age. We live in the nuclear age, and you know, I don't know what the the head count of nuclear bombs around the planet are now, but we're, we're capable of blowing this planet up. A lot mm. of times. I mean, mm. there are a lot of nations. So you're saying we could be, have already entered into the time of great tribulation? No, no, no. We haven't entered the tribulation. What I'm saying But when we is do, with those days, there has to be a time period for the, the chosen ones to be in that tribulation in order to, for those days to be cut short. No, we are, we are the chosen ones, all right? We were chosen before the foundation of the yeah. earth. So right. we, but Jesus is saying, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to pick an argument, I'm just no, no, trying to understand right. uh, 
what Jesus meant then by the fact that you know the chosen ones would actually we're, we're the elect and yeah, unless that same. Jesus yeah. is saying unless that time was shortened nobody would be saved yeah for the elect's sake you see the elect mm. are the the, the the believers I believe will be taken out of the planet earth before the tribulation but there are many many people in the tribulation who mm. um, who are beheaded but the point is that, that things will get so bad during the period of Antichrist, particularly the last mm. three and a half years, that with all those nuclear bombs around and all goodness knows what other uh, you know, weapons they've got, God is just saying, this has got to stop before they destroy themselves. But I actually believe, you know, it says that the heart of man is wicked. Okay. They would destroy themselves. Some more emails. We're not Sorry. going to take any like calls. I don't okay. think because we don't have time no, for that. Uh, good evening, brothers. This is from Dan. Uh, Exodus 31:17. It will be a sign between me and Israelite and the Israelites forever. For in the six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day he abstained from work and rested. Question: If God's creation is on, is the basis of our week? Yes. And the creation was before the fall. Yes. Doesn't that suggest that the Lord put in place a model that was to be used in the Garden of Eden as well as after being thrown out? Do you understand that question? No. I don't. No, I don't. I, I, no. I don't. Dan, you'll have to embellish on that question. Let me just go through some of the. We can talk about the six days of creation because that is very interesting. Yeah. Okay. Good evening, Howard uh, and mm -hmm. Richard. Yeah. What a wonderful program. We agree with you wholeheartedly. I don't know what on, but can mm. you give us, uh, as Christians, how to survive the finan financially at this time? We know Jesus is coming soon. Could listen all night. We'll go uh, onto Richard's website. Um, this is from Brian. Yeah. So. How right. will we how do you survive by, during the tribulation? Yes, Bef you know, or even this time. Th right. Well, yeah. you know, things are getting till we, tough till right we now. Go. Yeah. Right. Well, what I suggested: first of all, get out of debt. All right. Yeah. Now, how do you do that? We well, do exactly what I did. You get you get your checkbooks, and you get your <laughs> you get your Credit bank cards. statements, and you put the whole lot down. God can see them, but you're doing them down for your benefit, not His. <laughs> and you say, look, here's here's the mess, whatever it is. Here are my checkbooks. Here's the mess. What do you want me to do with my money? And He'll tell you. Yeah. Now, you know, we have a conscience, that's, that's, yeah. that's, our, that's the Holy Spirit speaking to us. Just listen to your conscience and do what God tells you to do. You're asking God, what do you want me to do with the money? It says, the earth is the Lord's, the world and everything in it. Now, you've got some money, it's actually God's money, because all of it belongs to God. Now, what you're saying is, what shall I do with this money? He'll tell you, he'll say, give a little bit to me. There's a little bit you give to God. You give that to God, and he'll, he said, when you give to Jesus, he says, he will give back, press down, shaken together and overflowing. But when you give that, you make sure that that goes to the right place. Because trouble is, you know, if you, you have to be really careful that that seed, that is very precious seed. It's like, you know, if you're a farmer and you've got a big field out there, you don't just throw the seed haphazardly. You actually very carefully you look after soil. it. Make sure it's good soil. That means there's no sin around, by the way. Mm. But make sure that the seed really goes to the people who need that seed. That's evangelism and poor people, homeless people, orphans, and you know the things that cr Christians should be doing. But on the whole, they're not. Yeah. And you know my experience. Don't is give it to tele evangelists. I didn't say that. <laughs> I did. I, I can say it. Okay. Well, I would agree I'm with you. I'm sorry because I would agree with you. Yeah. That See, is a it, waste it, this, of is, money. this is an answer because I'll get in trouble we, for that. But that, we, that's, that's we not did, me speaking, is it? We did this. We 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 put, we set up a charity, and you know it's an official charity. We go through the charity commission. We go through company house. It's all regulated. It's been going for years and years and years, and we don't ask for anything. We don't ask for any money. We don't sell anything. We just do it. We try to do it the way I, I believe Jesus did it. Yeah. God spoke to me very clearly yeah. two years ago. I'm, I've said this to the viewers recently mm. a lot, that this was coming two years ago, and to get out of debt. Yeah, we have paid all of our bills off in the yeah. last yeah. two years. That's why yeah. we moved out of central London. Right. God has Good. given us a studio. Yeah. On the other hand, wonderful. In the beautiful studio. Yeah, but you haven't seen the other one. I have in New Malden. New Malden, haven't yeah. you? No. I used, it's to live a gift it. I used to live in, in the Northern sense Northern. that the, 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 the rent is so small and we can get out within three months' notice. So we're Wonderful. not tied in. Wonderful. It, it's just amazing. Yeah. And uh, Barrett's, the, the builders own it and they're going to re, um, rebuild it mm. in the new world Wonderful. because they're 
<laughs> the system has fallen apart, and we, as we know, like a lot of the other companies, they can't, haven't got the money yeah. to, um, yeah. to you know, what do you call re redevelop it. Sure. Um, so we're really blessed. That's fantastic. Okay? I, mean, I love to hear that sort of story. Okay. That actually means so much to hear that God has really got you out of any form of debt or. You know, and that yeah. you, you know, you've got in a low rent situation because for a television ministry that means something. Well, it does. This is we expensive. don't have to beg for money, no. and it means that we can survive. I believe right up until the last moment that God wants us to be here, sure. not because we want to be here. No. Or it's fantastic. The, you know, so I'm, yeah. I'm so, I'm, I'm so. I'm so, the burden is incredibly light. Wow, amazing. Isn't it, isn't it incredible? Yeah. By, the, by the way, I've station, seen this station. There's fantastic equipment down there. I've, yeah. I haven't showed it to and you. It's, all it's paid amazing. Off. It's, it's all a, paid it's off. It's really expensive equipment, that. Yeah, <laughs> and it took us four years, but wow. we, we mm. paid it off. Yeah. And now we don't, we're not taking any more credit. We're actually paying for it cash. As, wow. you know, yeah. And it's a testimony to the company that we deal with. Well, there you go. Because they think a lot of Christians... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. we, we go there and we just pay. Yeah, wonderful. Isn't that lovely? It's By perfect. God's grace. By God's grace. Well, there you are, you see. That's the ex it's a, actually, it's a better testament than mine, actually. It's no, fantastic. no, it's the same. It's, it's the, same. the same. God yeah. is providing yeah. for both our needs yeah. in order to continue. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Hi, chaps. Excellent show. Jesus says that the seven candlesticks are the seven churches, etc. Um, by chapter 4 of Revelation, these candlesticks are in front of the throne in heaven. Amen. Once That's the right. church is gone, many will come to the knowledge of the Lord sort told you so these are the ones who will be beheaded uh, that's well don't that's a wonderful email because yeah. what he's saying that the seven candlesticks which are referred to in revelation seven one churches. are <clears throat> yeah jesus is moving amongst the seven candlesticks in revelation yeah. chapter one in revelation four after the rapture when they open door and he says the voice has come up here the 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 the, the, the sp seven spirits and the seven candlesticks are now in heaven wow that's they're now in heaven, mm. indicating the church is now in heaven at that point. Wow. That proves the pre-tribulation rapture. That happens before the rest of Revelation 4, Revelation 7 to Revelation 18 is all about the tribulation period, and the, the church is in heaven. Wow. That was from Peter, by the way. Hi, Howard and Richard. This is uh, uh, from Keith and Kathy. There for now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Yes. Walk not after flesh but after the Spirit. Yeah. As a reason for pre-trib, doesn't that mean that we are now not declared guilty of sin, but we have been made new in Christ Jesus, so as to the judgment seat, we are declared righteous? Yes. Actually, we do believe in pre-trib rapture, Good. because we aren't appointed unto wrath. That's However, right. However, that we could mean, as Barry Smith believed, mid-trib rapture, which we will know very soon anyway. Actually, Barry Smith changed his mind, you know if you're listening, Barry Smith changed his mind to a pre-trib position. Did he? Yes, he did. Well, he certainly... I knew Barry Smith. I know, he's a lovely, lovely, <laughs> lovely man. man. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. He was the only evangelist I know that didn't ask for money. Yeah. He, he yeah. was just a beautiful ministry. Lovely man. And lovely uh, man. he expended himself yeah. unto, the, unto death. Yeah. We're at the end of this particular <laughs> program, Well, God Richard. bless you. God bless you. Oh, it's so, so exciting. <laughs> yeah. And it's Wonderful. really good to have you on, and we'll yeah. have you back again. Yeah. And uh, also your, the pastor that you were talking about. Yeah, you about. must have him on. He's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> well, mm. But I want to say to you at home, just do not panic. Trust in the Lord, because lift your head up, because your deliverance is near. Whatever you believe in, pre-trib, post-trib, or no-trib. Mm. Well, you're in trouble then if you, if you don't believe at all. See you soon. Bye-bye.